Hello, my owl-loving friends. Very recently, we saw an end to the mystery of the Paris Eternal and London Spitfire's current status with their play in the Steel Series Invitational Tournament. Many eyes were drawn to a quintessentially EU composition, the good old Rhine Rush. Familiar to anyone who saw the early 2020 season, this composition may become a hallmark of our European mainstay teams. So let's take a look at why this composition exists and what makes it tick. Let's start basic. The Reinhardt, master of rush, swinger of hammers, and tank of singular conviction in this composition. The Reinhardt's primary focus in rush is to be the defining rod of your team. The singular will and direction within each every member places their trust and their lives. You call the pathing, you control the timing, and you initiate the plan. That said, the first question for many of you after hearing about Reinhardt will be, where's Zaya? You know, the weightlifting, half-mountain, half-human energy cannon hauler who's been so synonymous with Reinhardt in the past that they're essentially considered to be a singular entity. Well, as the EU meta stands, D.Va has once again stolen this spot away, and we'll take a quick dive into why that's the case. First of all, let's talk about a concept that's integral to Rush, and that's speed. And in many cases, D.Va allows for a faster tempo than Zarya because Zarya requires her first bubble rotation to get a usable level of energy to be a really good threat in a fight, whereas D.Va can start from zero and go to 100 as soon as she's in range. Next, we have to talk about how both of these off-tanks interact with a Mei, who's currently part of a meta for Rush, and you might think that Zaya's bubble being able to cleanse the progress of a freeze on a Reinhardt is a great asset, and you'd be correct that it is. However, once that is invested, it means that there's not really much that Zaya can do in terms of peeling for the next 8 seconds or so, whereas the Diva can be a little bit more spotty with where she is giving her peeling prowess throughout a teamfight, so it can be a bit more consistent about what they're going to be peeling. And of course, you have to talk about how Blizzard interacts with both of these off-tanks as well. Once Zarya has used both of her bubbles, Blizzard is essentially a free ultimate for the Mei to use. They can try and place it anywhere, and it's very hard to disengage from that, especially with the additional slow that can be gained from a cryo beam. Whereas with a D.Va, obviously there's that continual pressure upon the Mei to try and get the freeze on the D.Va first, and I can very much telegraph how that ultimate is going to be used and so a Lucio can respond a little bit more adequately in terms of trying to disengage or saving an amp to allow for a speed boost later to try and escape the clutches of a blizzard. On top of this we've got to look at how D.Va and Zaya survive in dive and rush scenarios as well. Zaya, after using her personal bubble is incredibly easy to kill especially for things like a tracer where Zaya's got no armor a small arms fire for Tracer does huge damage and can shred through a Zarya in seconds. Also, she doesn't really have any real means of escape once that bubble is expended, so both a rush with a Maywall can punish an overextending Zarya trying to do damage, or a dive can really get on top of her. And it's in this arena that the ability to use the boosters to get away from the Diva and to make themselves less of a viable dive or rush target that they have themselves an advantage. Lastly, we have to talk about the ultimate, Self-Destruct versus Graviton Surge. And it feels like currently, the Self-Destruct actually has a little bit more playmaking potential because there are so many ways which a Graviton can be mitigated, which are pretty hard-coded into teams playing Rush right now. You've got the Maywall, you've got the Immortality Field, and you've got Reinhardt's Shield to top all of that off. Whereas the Self-Destruct can be thrown in mid-fight and it can be combined very fruitfully with a pin, a boop, a slow, or even a flashbang if you're running a McCree in the DPS slot, so it's got a little bit more playmaking potential in the current meta. Now, that's not to say that Graviton Surge is a bad ultimate, just that there are so many ways to mitigate it in Rush versus Rush. Okay, so we've talked about why D.Va is necessary in the current iteration of Rush, but let's also talk about the supports. And more often than not, you're going to see Lucio and Baptiste run. And obviously, Lucio is there because of speed. It's in the name of Rush that speed is integral. It's quintessential to the composition. But also when you're playing both Baptiste and McCree, Lucio is responsible for ferrying those guys to the off angles that they may want to take in mid-fight to try and get a little bit more clutch capacity. And there's so much on the Lucio's plate in the Rush composition that can involve trying to chase off Sombras, hiding from EMPs, trying to take away assailants like a Diva in your backline that wants to be on your Baptiste and McCree. There's a lot on the Lucio's plate, and there's a reason why Lucio is always picked, and it's all of those jobs combined into one character. Okay, but let's talk about the flex support spot, and you're often going to be choosing between two options, the Baptiste and the Moira. 
Let's talk about Baptiste first, because to a lot of people, his immortality field makes him invaluable. That's like an ultimate level ability, but it's on a cooldown. However, his amplification matrix value is a little bit lower when going up against both the Diva defense matrix and the Mabel, but he has really good playmaking potential with his weapon and can off angle quite hard using his exo boots to access verticality quite easily, so there's a larger clutch factor. But that also means that staying alive is key, so you've got to think about positioning and cooldown usage, and that's a key skill set for the Baptiste to have to worry about. Meanwhile, Moira might be preferred for fights where the enemy has a large dive potential due to the AoE heal, spray, and fade, as well as survivability from her self-heal without having to expend any cooldowns to make that happen, as well as an ultimate that generates fast, and it has extended usefulness because of how tightly rush comps play it, so you can get more heal in that AoE, you can get a lot of damage and healing done at the same time. You've got to remember as well that because of her fade to escape, she can avoid things like EMPs if her timing is good enough and allow for really good responses to Sombras, which are becoming increasingly common in other compositions. Lastly, with May's spot almost guaranteed in most rush comps, I want to divert our attention towards an anomaly that we saw during the Steel Series Invitational Games from London Spitfire. And that Shaq's playing a tracer with a rush composition on Blizzard World Point C. And I think that Shaq chooses the tracer here to try and deal more effectively with the Sombra that's being brought out with Bird Ring. We know that in a one versus one duel, Tracer is usually going to have an advantage over Sombra because she has a higher DPS output, a little bit better in a duel with the Blinks and, of course, access to the recall. But also, I think that the Tracer can gather information with a little bit more safety to allow their Reinhardt to plan a little bit better. And being able to bully out that Sombra heavily nerfs the EMP generation of the enemy Sombra. And these are things that can really help your team to win out more fights more consistently. And furthermore, when going up against things like a Winston and Azaya, there is a lot of tank burst that you can get out of that Tracer to help bully out the enemy Zaya once she's used her bubbles. You can two clip a Zaya. You can even one clip her if you're getting all headshots with a Tracer because she's got no armor. So I think that's why we saw the Tracer with the Rush for London Spitfire, and I'll be interested to see if they continue to deploy this strategy in the future. So guys, that was a quick rundown of uh, how the EU Rush meta sort of like defined itself in terms of the characters that they're using, and a little bit of why. I'm sorry we didn't get to cover everything today, like we didn't get to talk about the Sombra Tracer kind of Rush that... Uh, London Spitfire ran for a little bit. I'm kind of weirded out by it, but there's going to be plenty of analytical content on this channel for you to continue watching so you can understand a little bit more about how Overwatch League and its teams work. And I'm sure you're as interested as me to see if this meta even makes it to the Overwatch League. Obviously, there's plenty of time for balance between now and when the league starts. So make sure that you're subscribed here. We'll try and keep you up to date. You can even check out some of our funny content. I'm moderately funny, I promise you. Four out of 10. We didn't really do any funny stuff in this video. You know what? That's fine. There's going to be a suggested video after this one that you might want to watch. So if you'd love to give the channel some love and some time, I'd appreciate you taking a look at that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.